Hello there, it's Yako here. Today I want to take a look at this asset that I'm creating this modular uh, game environment, this kind of like a tunnel thing here. And I'd like to take a look at um, some of the techniques that I find very really useful when quickly creating uh, uh, modular assets and things that have like shared shared UVs and shared textures. So uh, there's a really good tool in Substance uh, Designer where we can uh, combine different uh, PBR materials really nicely so um let's take a look i'm just uh put this model into this uh, tool back here and just gonna preview preview this to, to see how the materials and textures and colors just turn out so um yeah let's take a look so so i've got the substance designer is the latest version here and and what i've done in here is just uh, basically laid out these uh the, all the textures that i'm using so actually in this scene that we, uh, we are watching here this is just uh, all of this is just basically this so there's no no uh, any ad additional texture so we can see we have much more uh, space here left so I could put some more that way of course you can you can also uh, break this apart and add some detail to the other channels like for example I did some uh, I put some dirt to the roughness channel to give it more like a definition so you can absolutely do that and it's just no problem you can do that and then uh, what I've done is I took the metal and then I created another atlas maker and then uh, changed the tile mask size and offset this. So the way how this offset works is that uh, you can see that you can offset this by uh, by just uh, putting some number values in here and then you can sort of uh, maximize the space that you're using. You're using. So of course it's a really nice way if you measure these. So what I've done is that I measured these geometry pieces in here and see that how uh, how much uh, space do they, do this need? So I've used like a value of uh, fifteen twelve as a sort of a, a, a general uh, pixel density uh, value. Of course, you can uh, come up with your own values. So, so yes, there is a really good video in Algorithmic uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I'm gonna link to that. So definitely watch that. It uh, uh, this McWormer uh, really perfectly just comes uh, explains that how this is done so I absolutely watch that but uh, I'm gonna sh show you the things that I found useful so yes so so what I've done yes I just uh, use another atlas maker and then uh, took material blend and then took this blending mask in here and then just mask it by that so then also um, what I'm doing again here is just using the bricks and and then um, modifying that and, and come again doing atlas maker and then we are building this in that way and then also uh, put this uh, rusted metal thing in here and then of course well UVs are un 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 um, sorry UVs are uh, overlapping so uh, of course uh, we can re keep reusing these over and over again it's, it's no problem in game models and things like that so so there's tons of uh, overlapping UVs in here but but that's what you come up with when you're doing uh, modular assets like that so when and things like that are just one module like here and then uh, we have another uh, t t kind of t joint in here and then we have like a straight tunnels and and so on so these are rotatable so you can see this is the same as that one and so on so um so yes um something to yeah something to keep in mind if you're doing something like that is to do just uh, ensure that uh for example in this pipes in here I've done so that the the seam is just going to be under this um, holder piece in here so that the, you can see that uh, we don't we don't see any seam. normally uh, in this case uh, when you're using Atlas Maker you can also do it actually so that it's uh, tileable so let's take a look how we do that how we make textures uh, tileable like seamlessly so what I've done of course you can you can also uh, break this apart and add some detail to the other channels like for example I did some uh, um, I put some dirt to the roughness channel to give it more like a definition so you can absolutely do that and it's just no problem you can do that and then uh, what I've done is I took the metal and then I created another atlas maker and then uh, changed the tile mask size and offset this so the way how this offset works is that uh, you can see that you can offset this by uh, by just uh, putting some number values in here and then you can Sort of uh, maximize the space that you're using. You're using. So of course, it's a really nice way if you measure these. So what I've done is that I measured these 
geometry pieces in here and see that how uh, how much uh, space do they, do this need so I've used like a value of uh, 15 12 as a sort of a, a, a general uh, pixel density uh, value of course you can uh, come up with your own values so so yes there is a really good video in algorithmic uh, uh, YouTube channel uh, I'm gonna link to that so definitely watch that it uh, uh, this McWormer uh, really perfectly just comes uh, explains that how this is done so I absolutely watch that but uh, I'm gonna sh show you the things that I found useful so yes yeah, so so what I've done yes I just uh, use another atlas maker and then uh, took material blend and then took this blending mask in here and then just mask it by that so then also um, what I'm doing again here is just using the bricks and and then um, modifying that and and come again doing Atlas Maker and then we are building this in that way and then also uh, put this uh, rusted metal thing in here and then of course well UVs are un 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 um, sorry UVs are uh, overlapping so uh, of course uh, we can keep reusing these over and over again it's, it's no problem in game models and things like that so so there's tons of uh, overlapping uvs in here but but that's what you come up with when you're doing uh, modular assets like that so when, when things like that are just one module like here and then uh, we have another uh, t t kind of t joint in here and then we have like a straight tunnels and and so on so these are rotatable so because this is the same as that one and so on so um so yes, um, something to yeah, something to keep in mind if you're doing something like that is to do just uh, ensure that, uh, for example, in these pipes in here, I've done so that the the seam is just going to be under this um, holder piece in here, so that the, you can see that uh, we don't we don't see any seam. Normally, uh, in this case, uh, when you're using Atlas Maker, you can also do it actually so that it's um, Tileable. So let's take a look how we do that, how we make textures uh, tileable like seamlessly. So, what I've done in here uh, in this guy is that I've set this, um, uh, well, I did this edge justified to the position in that way, but also I do this make seamless. So, what this material tile does is that it will um, sort of scale the material in here, uh, and, and then you can just uh, adjust the scale by using the material tile. So, this will tile it and then you can hit the make seamless so this will make it seamless and then uh, you have to um, set the seam axis so what this does is that it's going to be seamless in one certain direction and I want to be seamless in horizontal so uh, for example these 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 are going to be filled walls so if you take a look at the, these walls we can see that one is here and one is here and then makes I use horizontal make seamless so actually there's a little bit of a seam in here uh, but probably that's something that uh, I couldn't avoid for some reason. Maybe uh, we could take a look at it. Yeah, here is, we can see that we have like a, it seems as it's, there's no uh, there's no line between those. And the way how this is achieved is just by using this uh, making it seamless. And it's, it's really pretty powerful tool if you think about it. You you're able to automatically make things uh, work this way. So now we have like a one wall in here, and if we put another wall next to it. It's going to be uh, tiling seamlessly. So, yeah, they're really useful things. Again, you just have to be make sure that your uh, geometry and uh, texture density and the resolution of your textures is in uh, in sync, so that you don't have any weird, uh, um, yeah, many weird issues. So it's really nice. So you can also see the PBR values in here in this uh, cube, so so we can get a good idea how it works out. So we still have a plenty of space that uh, we can utilize. We could put some props in here, for example, and and create some unique textures for the props, for example. And what's also really nice about this is that if you just need to grab some uh, some nodes, if you have some materials or something, you just just drag and drop them here. It's, you're ready to go. You, you can uh, you can also you know, drop back to this uh, null mode anytime you want just by hitting one in the in the keyboard so so now I'm able to just tweak any anything <laughs> here so it's pretty powerful and if we update this one map uh, we can just uh, come here and see it in real time in, in the whole map so if we just want to adjust this wall texture for example we can see that in uh, right in the context 
we can see that um, change we made in the real uh, actual uh, environment which is just uh, I think brilliant workflow so definitely that's um, something that I'm uh, considering to, to do more in the future to work this way that that you uh, using one texture sheet for several uh, modular assets uh, definitely something to to consider if you're doing that kind of thing uh, that kind of thing so of course well this isn't like uh, if you're doing baked assets if you're just baked uh, baking stuff but but of course you can utilize this free space in here now that you, let's say that um, we're done with this and we just want to do some baked assets in here we can just use this same texture space for that as well um, I'm not actually sure how to combine them at the moment because you have like a several you might have like five or six channels if you're doing like ambient occlusion and height and so on so it's going to be uh, if you just do that in Photoshop you just uh, uh, finally just uh, mix them in Photos world you can do that but it's kind of uh, if you have to do some changes and so on then it's not really clean workflow that way but um, there must be a way actually that you could probably well you could probably do it in here in the designer you just, just drag the textures here as image now uh, as image nodes and then just uh, plug them in that's good work for example so if you want to do that if you just want to Let's say that we need to put some barrels and things like that in here it's it should be possible it should be no problem to do that so actually that's something that i might actually also uh, experiment with this so i might put some props in here and then uh, they're going to be part of this uh, uh tunnel asset thing uh, so so yes um just a little food for thought if you are doing a modular asset and you want to use substance designer to create ppr uh, materials for your Assets. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little. Uh, I don't know if you can call this tutorial. It's not much of a tutorial because I didn't really go that much in depth in that. But but you can get the idea. And you just uh, grab this Atlas Maker uh, node from Substance uh, from Algorithmic site. You can just start to play around with this and experiment. So yeah, just a little um, look and look at the uh, making modular assets this way. So this was Jakob. I hope to see you guys. So. Bye-bye.